Welcome back to Control, episode 45. We're going to do the ashtray maze, and I'm sure that you can find people doing the ashtray maze everywhere on YouTube. It's, it's the best part of the game and makes for the best streaming. We're going to be doing it pretty analytically, but we may also be doing it without a, a music element. Um, what we've got over here in audio is I've got the mute copyrighted music button turned on, and I actually don't know whether or not that mutes the song here. If it does, then that's a poor choice of song on their part because it's integral to the experience. But we'll find out soon. If, uh, if it does mute the song, go watch someone else play it. Oh! Well, we got the song. Hopefully YouTube won't kill us. So, aside from the song choice being correct, we also have a really, really marvelous set of frenzied little changes, frenzied little rooms with pieces that come up and come down. Now I'm going to be taking this at a much slower pace than most of the people who are going to do it, but I'm still going to take it pretty fast because that's part of the joy. Feel free to rewind it and sort of just take a quick little peek at how these rooms evolve as you move through them. Um, the, the way that these things unfold is extremely simple, but because it happens at such a high speed and with such a high backing track, it really works well, and it shows you just how important the flow of the levels are, rather than just the level design. This is this is this is a sequence entirely about flow, and it is really really well done to the point where it is what everybody remembers. So if you have to choose between level design being perfect and level design flowing well, always choose flow. And look how simple this is in comparison to most of the other stuff. But because it is all about the flow, it can be simple. We got the psychedelic part, the psychedelic parts, upside down rooms, rooms flying away, walls spinning. All of this stuff works really well. We can talk about psychedelia in more detail later, but psychedelia is always stronger when there is a, a secondary component. In this case, the song, which is blasting at us, um, makes this psychedelia work really, really well. Um, if we didn't have the song here, this wouldn't be nearly as impressive, and that's kind of the point. Oh no, shit! <laughs> you psyched me out there, house. Now, because this is such a good part of the game, it's almost a shame that they didn't do it more. I imagine it was pretty expensive, despite the simple design of each room, there are hundreds of them. Um, but it would have been super nice to see this sort of thing happen a couple of times, because this is the closest thing we get to the oldest house talking to us. Oh, you really should have banned side quest pop-ups during this sequence. Get off the fucking screen! Nobody fucking cares, thank you. This song is definitely perfect in terms of it actually being literally just explaining what's happening right now. I just died because explosives. Notice that there are certain times when we see certain kinds of decorations almost as if we can make it through those side doors, but they're actually closed off ahead of time. We got like a horned demon enemy up here. That was 
a fun little thing to just kind of see out the corner of our eye. It's all about the flow. It's all about how it unfolds. And here you can see the house helping us by closing off the enemies. It really is talking to us, whether it's something on its own, whether the ashtray maze is an independent entity, or whether it is the house. Either way, we're talking to it, we're getting help by it, we're conversing with it. It feels really good. Oh man, I missed. Oh, we're supposed to go up there, huh? How do we get there? We take the elevator. Where do we go down? Nope, we do not go down. Okay, we're supposed to go up. I just misread the situation. How can we get up there? Are you gonna help us? I must be an idiot. I just have to kill off the bad guys first, don't I? But where the heck are they? There's a little bit of musical timing to this, and sometimes I get ahead of the game. But that's fine. There we are. Now that we understand what's going on here, we just kill enemies and they build us a bridge. Now this part I don't mind the fact that there's like, we're building a, you know, normally when it's like, oh, you have to kill the enemies to advance, it feels really forced and fake. But in this case, we are talking to the house, and the house is saying, if you kill these enemies, I will forge a forward path for us. And that's the ashtray maze. Uh, one of the most famous parts that of the game. Was awesome. And even Jesse thinks it was awesome. Projector. Don't ruin it for us. The expedition into Slidescape 36. Nobody cares. What darling brought back. Ugh. Was it the ashtray maze? No? Then we don't care. Harsh in our buzz, man. Anyway, that part's over. We're now in dimensional research. I'm not going to say I don't like this area. This area is kind of nice. But you can't really compare anything to Auntie's Vacation and the Ashtray Maze. That's where the game reaches its... Uh, I guess you want to call it... Um, uh, not... not it's a, it's a psychedelic peak, is what it is. That's the part of the game where the game is like, this is the drug trip part of the game. Please sit back and enjoy. Like if you're watching Willy Wonka, and uh, uh, and you get to that part with the river and, and the, no way to know which way the water's flowing, whatever that thing, you know. It's like that part. It's the psychedelic part. Um, I would have really enjoyed this game to be... Finding the projector was how this all began. I would really enjoy if this game really doubled down on that stuff, because it could have... This is fundamentally a game about psychological elements. We could definitely have had a game with a lot more of that psychological stuff, because that's the point of the game. It's like, oh, the OOPs react to human thought. Oh, really? Well, I got some thoughts for them. Let's go ahead and have some fun with that. Or it can just give you the power to throw a dumpster. Exciting. Well, here we've got some gelatin. Mmm, gelatin. So this red sand that I noticed in that room over there kind of fills this area. And once again, like I like we pointed out in the clocks, adding in these biological shapes, even if they're not like actual biological entities, adding in these smooth biological shapes to soften the edges of your architecture means that you can go full brutalism with your architecture and not end up feeling too um, too brutal. You know, it feels pretty good. For some reason, I wanted to check that. I thought maybe there was a loop that I missed. Um, I know that there have been some some fragile walls I missed. I haven't really been keeping a strong eye out there for them. There was a doorway here, to where Dylan and I went, where the projector took us, where we met you. The bureau opened the same door here, but there's just an echo now. So I like this part too. We see the same 
We see the same sort of illusion that we saw while chasing down Ati, but it's not of a beach. It's of some kind of Martian desert. Um, this idea that there are other worlds sort of superimposed on our world is a fun one. We've seen it in a lot of other kinds of adventure games. It almost always works out really well. Uh, in this case, leaving it for this late in the game is a little bit of a... I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say a mistake. It's just a little bit disappointing because it's something that could have been taken advantage of much more aggressively early on. Uh, and also, we should have had the ashtray maze in minute 5. <laughs> or, you know, minute minute 30. It should have been real early on. Something where we could really get to feel like the uh, house is talking to us. You know, this is probably a good place to stop, though. Staring off into the deserts of Mars. We're going to leave it here, uh, and we'll come back to it some other time. I'm going to run back down the stairs and save my game at the control point. Although, it saves pretty much constantly, so unless your save game is broken, it should save just fine. By the way, if your save game is broken and it just stops saving and updating uh, option changes and stuff like that, if that happens, just reboot your computer. It should work fine. Have a good one.